Hello again, I'm Rodney Reynolds and welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at the Ultra X3 1000 Watt Modular Power Supply. What's included is the user's manual, modular flex force cables, power cable, screws for mounting the power supply in the case, and the power supply. The Ultra X3 line of power supplies range from 600 watts to 1600 watts. I will be reviewing the 1000 watt model, which is enough power for today's hardcore computer systems. Now, how is this wattage determined? Well, to understand that, you need to know what rails are. Rails are basically well regulated transformers which convert domestic current into the voltages that your computer system can use. And there are essentially two different rails the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail and the 12 volt rail. In this particular case, the approximate maximum peak output of the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is 160 watts and the 12 volt is 840 watts, which is essentially how the wattage of this power supply is determined. The 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is responsible for the motherboard, memory, PCI cards and so on, while the 12 volt rail is responsible for the hard drives, optical drives, fans, CPU, video cards, etc. Also, some might be interested to know the peak amps on each rail. Well, the plus 3.3 volt is 24 amps and the plus 5 volt is 28 amps. Now, many of today's power supplies, especially the high wattage power supplies, have two to four plus 12 volt rails. But this power supply has one large plus 12 volt rail, which is 70 amps. A single plus 12 volt rail is preferred in a multiple video card setup. Ultra has two models perfect for this. The 1000 watt ULT 40064A model for an AMD Crossfire video card setup and the 1000 watt ULT 40064 model which is for the NVIDIA SLI video card setup. There are a couple of very important things to remember when selecting a power supply. The first is wattage. Determine how much wattage you are going to require by the amount of hardware you will be installing. Generally speaking, a medium to high-end gaming rig would require a 500 to 700 watt power supply. If, however, you are going hardcore and have a multiple video card set up with lots of other hardware, select a power supply that's above 700 watts. Second, it should be at or above 80% efficient at typical load. The efficiency of this power supply is 85% under typical load. Third, it should meet the latest ATX and other current standards, environmental directives, overvoltage, undervoltage, and other protections. This power supply meets all current standards. Fourth, I recommend getting a power supply that has APFC. APFC or active power factor correction is something that also assists the power supply in being more efficient and therefore stable under load. APFC basically reduces total harmonics, corrects input voltage, and it allows for full input voltage range. Thankfully, this power supply has active PFC. Finally, get a power supply that has enough leads for your setup. Let's have a closer look at this power supply. The steel housing has a highly reflective paint finish and they include a quiet 135 millimeter fan. Note that this fan is recessed so it will fit in most ATX cases. Along with this fan and the many ventilation holes, this power supply will remain cool in almost any environment. Here's the power cable connection and the power switch. This power supply has lots of leads and they are all modular, sleek looking flex force cables. As the name suggests, these cables are super flexible, which allows them to bend around almost anything. They are perfect for hiding cables behind the motherboard tray or neatly tucking them out of sight. This design also increases airflow inside the case by about 30% over standard power supply cables. The modular design makes connecting and disconnecting leads a snap. It also means that you only need to use the leads required for your particular setup. Finally, have a listen to the 135mm fan.
What separates this power supply from the many others that are currently on the market is this one is entirely modular. Some power supplies within the 1000 watt range say they're modular, but they are not entirely modular. Usually the main motherboard lead and maybe one or two video card leads are hardwired into the power supply. This power supply also comes with a very quiet 135 millimeter fan. And I like the fact that they have a wide wattage range to choose from. You can get one at 600 watts or go all the way up to 1600 watts. Overall, this is a 100% kick-ass product. Again, my name is Rodney Reynolds. This has been another video review. Be sure to check back very soon. I will have a brand new one for you then. Also, pop into my website at www.3dgameman.com. And while you're there, you can go into the forums and register. And remember, registration is completely free. Also, keep in mind, you can find out a lot more on this product in the forums. And as a final note, if you love watching my video reviews, please remember to help support 3dgameman.com. If you wish to support, please visit support3gm.com. Until the next time, take care. Supply. If, however, you are going, you are going, you are going, you are going, ah, gore, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Most of the higher wattage current, more high end, more high end, you know, the kind of stuff that's really good, you know, it's good, man. Bend around almost anything. They are perfect, you know. <laughs> There are many high wattage power supplies on the market, and the loud, blah, 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 but usually only peripheral leads are modular. Modular, la, 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 la,